Break out the barbecues, the beer, the family, friends, suds, and coleslaw. Memorial Day delivers that much anticipated three day weekend in the traditional beginning of summer. Of course, it's much more than that. When it comes to this day, there is one phrase that should never be used again. I'm at Berliner. Let us delve into that issue, hear from those who've been there and back, and deal with a growing population of military veterans who deserve a lot more than a handout. This is the hard line. For 147 years, our nation has set aside this day to pay solemn tribute to patriots who gave their last full measure of devotion for this country that we love. And while the nature of war has changed over that time, the values that drive our brave men and women in uniform remain constant. Today we especially honor all of our fallen of this war. We remember the over 2,300 American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who have been killed in action during the last 14 years. We also remember the more than 1,100 coalition fallen who have also lost their lives fighting for a common cause to build a more stable, secure Afghanistan as we also protect our homeland. To all who rest here, we say, your example of sacrifice will never be forgotten. The Iraqi forces just showed no will to fight. Uh, they were not outnumbered. Uh, in fact, they vastly outnumbered the opposing force. And yet they failed to fight. They withdrew from the site. And uh, that uh, says uh, to me, and I think to most of us, that we have an issue with the will of the Iraqis to fight ISIL and defend themselves. There has perhaps been no greater time in our modern history where the military and the American people are more closely intertwined. The need for greater security, attacks against the homeland, homegrown killers seeking to find their way back with a bloody trail, the never-ending war overseas. And at the same time, the ranks of veterans in desperate need of military care and far too often finding nothing but empty promises. Call Memorial Day 2015 a point where America needs to better understand the soldiers and better understand the world around them with how that military fits in. Our first guest is a former Navy SEAL and author of Battle on the Home Front, Carl Higby, joined also by a Marine Corps veteran and current legislative and political director for Concerned Veterans for America, Dan Caldwell. Gentlemen, I thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for having us. First of all, let me say to both of you, thank you very much for your service. We mean that sincerely. And we need to focus on that service and what has happened with that service over the years. Carl, let me begin with you. When we hear Defense Secretary Ashton Carter talking about the fact that even he now says it out loud that the Iraqis seem to have no will to fight for the land, for the homes, for the people that so many gave their lives for already, how angry does that make you? I mean, it's, in, it's incredibly frustrating. And the one thing that I've been saying from the beginning, we've been training these guys for 10 plus years over there in Iraq and Afghanistan. And if they're not able to defend their own country at this point, another 10 years of training is not going to do it either. So the, the only option here is militarily to solve the problem. So do we need to then decide as a country that we've got to go in? You've got to send the military back in. Let's stop this nonsense, because if we don't do it then, Carl, it's never going to end. Right. And I've, been, I've had this argument countless times with countless people. The fact of the matter is the only way to win this war, first we have to go in there and take back what we lost recently because of ISIS. And then we have to do what's, what, what, what is willing to be done with war, like World War II. We have to do mass damage, conflict mass casualty, yes, collateral damage, and unfortunately war is hell. So that's what we have to do. Dan, is that specifically what people have got to look at, but not just the American people, but maybe the politicians? Because it seems many members of the GOP are now starting to pull themselves away from the Iraq war. It's almost as if they're trying to create a distance here when maybe the time is right, the American people and the politicians have got to realize, don't pull back because you're only going to force us to do this again. Well, the problem that I have had with the GOP candidates is, is that they're, they're allowing the left to set the terms of the debate. 
We, it doesn't matter anymore to debate whether or not it was the right thing to do to invade Iraq. Personally, in retrospect, I agree. It probably was not the right thing to do to go in the way that we, we did. But that doesn't matter anymore. What matters is that ISIS controls most of Al-Anbar now. They control a large amount of, of, of Syria. They are planning attacks against the American homeland and our allies in the Middle East. That is the issue at hand. There's no point to go back and relitigate what happened in 2002-2003. Learn lessons from it, yes. But what they need to do is define a strategy to defeat ISIS now and to secure that area. Because the fact is, is there's now threats to the American homeland and interests around the world. That's what we need to discuss, not going back and relitigating what happened in 2003. Dan, isn't it also partly then that members of the GOP, whatever it is, whether it's left, right, whatever, they need to stop letting certain members of the media set this because it's the media who started this question. Certain people who said, well, if you could go back and if you knew now what you know then, it's a silly question in so many ways when you talk to the military because it's foolish. Stop looking back and start looking forward. Stop letting certain members of the press set the entire agenda, yes? Ed, you nailed it. You're absolutely correct. Dan, let me get to you as well on this. I know I've talked to you about this. Carl, I wanted to mention this to you as well. This whole idea of going back. Isn't this just stupid to keep asking this question and for members of politics, lawmakers, to let themselves get caught in this trap? Absolutely. And I've been saying it from day one. I said, you know, if we were going to find ourselves as soon as we pulled out of Iraq, we were going to find their back in 10 years. And uh, piggybacking on what Dan said, we not only need to clearly define a strategy, we need to define a goal before we do anything, which uh, the president has failed to, uh, to mention. I think it's just a travesty that we have to go back in and recommit resources and lives to this, this, uh, this fight. Carl, how frustrated are you when we talk about military veterans today? And here we are a year later, all these wonderful promises made about fixing the Veterans Administration. I got a call from a friend of mine last night who is a veteran who is now homeless. He can't even get the service that he needs from the Veterans Administration. This is despicable, the fact that we still treat our veterans as if they are fourth-class citizens. You're absolutely right. And, and Dan could speak to this as well. And him and I have spoken off the record about it. And it, it's incredible that the unwillingness to do their job, I mean, you're talking about $170 billion a year budget, can't take care of 9 million veterans. Give me a break. Dan, you too. I know very well you're involved in this with Concerned Veterans for America. I talk about a friend of mine who is now in, in housing because he can't afford anything. He's a veteran who served his country. How do we change this narrative then? How do we actually start to get people to understand and push these people in power to get something done? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that we can't keep doing what we've done in the past to fix the VA, which is just dump more money into the VA without accountability. Uh, you know, Carl mentioned a $170 billion budget. That's nearly tripled since the start of the war on terror, and you have not seen this massive increase in usage from Iraq and Afghanistan veterans that the VA would like you to believe. A lot of that is driven, frankly, by Vietnam era veterans, by veterans that, that have entered the VA because of economic circumstances. And the fact of the matter is, is that we need to address how we got here in the, in the first place, and it's by dumping money into an inefficient and broken system. Look, bottom line, you can't run a healthcare system under the same set of rules that you run the Department of Education. What that means is you need to give the VA the flexibility to make business decisions, to, to not be tied down by government red tape, not be tied down by rules that are set by government unions. And most importantly, you need to give veterans a choice of where they get their health care. Let the health care dollars follow them, not a VA bureaucrat. And I'm that's key. I've only got 45 seconds left, and I need to ask you both this. I'll start with you, Dan. I've told people now, stop saying Happy Memorial Day. I'm asking people to say, have an appreciative Memorial Day. Have a reflective Memorial Day. Isn't it better, Dan, just to tell people, don't say Happy Memorial Day. It's not a, it's not a right thing to say. It, it, it's, it's not appropriate, and, and unfortunately, it kind of goes back to a misunderstanding of what this day is about. It's not about the living veterans. It's about remembering those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Unfortunately, our own president is pushing that Happy Memorial Day nonsense. I, it's, it's absolutely disgusting, but you're, you're absolutely correct, Ed, and I'm glad you're doing that. 15 seconds to you, Carl. You agree? Yeah, absolutely agree completely. And I think that most people mean well by it, but I don't, I don't want to demonize the populace by saying that it's wrong. But I think uh, what we need to do is we need to remember that this is about the fallen. It's not about the barbecues.
please think about saying an appreciative or a reflective Memorial Day. I think it's better. Carl Higby, Dan Caldwell, thank you both. And I sincerely mean it when I say thank you for your service, gentlemen. I'll look forward to speaking thank again. Sir. All right. Think about that again. A reflective Memorial Day, better idea. Stay with us. The Hardline continues.